smallpox. Smallpox is a deadly viral disease that ravaged humanity for millennia, killing hundreds of millions before being eradicated in 1980. Imagine a disease so feared that entire cities would shut down at the mere rumor of an outbreak. That was smallpox. Caused by the varilla virus, smallpox was not only highly contagious but also grotesquely visible. Victims broke out in blistering pustules that covered the face, arms and body. Survivors often carried lifelong scars, while many were left blind. For centuries this virus dictated the course of human history. It wiped out emperors, shaped dynasties, and became a grim companion to exploration and colonization. When European colonizers arrived in the Americas, they brought more than ships and weapons, they brought smallpox. Indigenous populations who had no immunity were devastated. Some regions saw mortality rates soar to over 90%. This collapse of entire societies allowed colonization to accelerate, changing the geopolitical map of the world forever. Yet, smallpox also gave rise to one of humanity's greatest victories. In the 18th century, an English physician named Edward Jenner noticed that milkmaids exposed to cowpox seemed immune to smallpox. He developed the first vaccine derived from cowpox material and unwittingly sparked the entire field of immunology. Two centuries later, the World Health Organization mounted an unprecedented global campaign. With mass vaccinations, careful tracking, and relentless dedication, smallpox became the first human disease to be completely eradicated from Earth. The story of smallpox is one of duality, horror, and triumph. It shows us how a virus can decimate civilizations yet also propel humanity toward medical revolutions that save countless lives. The Black Death Bubonic Plague the Black Death is a medieval pandemic caused by Yersinia pestis, transmitted by fleas on rats, that killed up to 200 million people in the 14th century. Though technically a bacterium, the Black Death spread with such viral-like speed and devastation that it belongs in any list of world-changing outbreaks. Arriving in Europe in 1347, likely via trade routes from Asia, the plague unleashed an apocalypse on medieval society. Within just a few years, nearly half of Europe's population perished. Villages were abandoned. Fields turned to wasteland. Entire towns fell silent. The symptoms were as terrifying as the speed of infection. Fever, chills, vomiting, and the infamous buboes, swollen, blackened lymph nodes that gave the disease its name. Many victims died within days. The sheer scale of the death toll shattered medieval faith in existing institutions. Churches couldn't explain the plague. Doctors bled patients to no avail. Some saw it as divine punishment while others turned to violent scapegoating, massacring Jewish communities in an attempt to halt the spread. But the Black Death's impact wasn't only catastrophic. It reshaped Europe in ways that paved the path toward modernity. With half the workforce gone, surviving peasants suddenly found their labor more valuable. Feudal lords, desperate for workers, were forced to offer better wages and conditions. This helped dismantle the rigid social hierarchy of feudalism. Cities, once crippled, began to reorganize around trade and guild systems. The seeds of the Renaissance were, in part, fertilized by the ashes of the plague. The Black Death also left a genetic imprint. Some survivors carried mutations that made them resistant not only to plague but also to later diseases, such as HIV. In this way, the deadliest pandemic of medieval times altered the very DNA of humanity. The 1918 Spanish Flu the 1918 Spanish flu is an influenza pandemic that infected one-third of the global population and killed at least 50 million people. As World War I raged, an even deadlier enemy silently swept across the globe. The 1918 influenza pandemic, misleadingly called the Spanish flu, because Spain's uncensored press reported openly on it, emerged in the chaos of wartime mobilization. Soldiers packed into trenches, trains and ships became perfect carriers, ensuring the virus spread to every corner of the world. What made this flu so unusual was who it killed. Most influenza strains primarily threatened the very young and the elderly. But the 1918 strain targeted healthy adults between the ages of 20 and 40. Entire families were wiped out and hospitals were overwhelmed. Victims often drowned in their own lungs as pneumonia set in, their skin turning a ghastly blue. In some towns, bodies piled up faster than graves could be dug. The global death toll was staggering far exceeding battlefield casualties. While the war killed about 17 million people, the flu claimed three times as many in less than two years. This pandemic altered not just demographics but also geopolitics. Weakened populations struggled to rebuild. Some historians argue the flu helped shape the post-war political order by deep. Chevy AIDS 
HIV AIDS is a viral disease caused by the human immunodeficiency virus, which has killed over 40 million people since the 1980s and reshaped global health. When HIV first emerged in the late 20th century, it carried not just a devastating biological impact but also a powerful cultural stigma. At first, it was a mystery illness. Patients, often young and otherwise healthy, began suffering from rare cancers and infections. Their immune systems were collapsing. By the early 1980s, scientists identified HIV as the culprit, a virus that attacks the very cells designed to protect the body from disease. What made HIV different was its slow burn. Unlike smallpox or influenza, HIV didn't kill quickly. Instead, it could lie dormant for years, silently spreading from person to person. By the time symptoms appeared, the immune system was already compromised, opening the door to opportunistic infections that defined AIDS. This insidious timeline made containment nearly impossible. The social impact was profound. Early on, HIV was heavily associated with marginalized groups, particularly gay men and intravenous drug users. Fear and discrimination spread almost as fast as the virus itself. Entire communities were stigmatized and misinformation fueled prejudice. But as cases rose globally, it became clear that HIV respected no boundaries. It spread through heterosexual contact, blood transfusions, and from mother to child, turning into a worldwide epidemic. In sub-Saharan Africa, HIV, AIDS devastated entire generations. In some countries, life expectancy dropped by decades. Economies suffered as the most productive segments of the population. Young adults died in staggering numbers. Children were left orphaned by the millions. The epidemic wasn't just a medical crisis, it was a humanitarian one. Yet out of this darkness came breakthroughs. The development of antiretroviral therapy, ART, transformed HIV from a death sentence into a chronic, manageable condition. Grassroots activism, particularly from the LGBTQ community, pressured governments and pharmaceutical companies to accelerate research and make treatments accessible. The global fight against HIV AIDS also pushed forward international cooperation in medicine and public health, leading to initiatives like the Global Fund and PEPFAR. Even today, a cure remains elusive, but prevention, treatment and awareness have dramatically reduced transmission. HIV, AIDS forced the world to confront not just a virus but also the social inequalities and stigmas that allowed it to spread so widely. It remains one of the most defining health challenges of the modern era. Polio. Polio is a highly infectious viral disease that primarily strikes children, sometimes causing paralysis or death, and inspired one of the most iconic vaccination campaigns in history. For much of the 20th century, polio was a parent's greatest fear. Each summer, as swimming pools and playgrounds filled with children, whispers of outbreaks spread. A single cough, a single touch could bring the virus. Most infections caused only mild illness, but in a fraction of cases, polio invaded the nervous system, leading to irreversible paralysis. Some children were left unable to walk. Others required lifelong support inside the infamous iron lung machines, which mechanically pumped air into their lungs when their own muscles failed. The psychological impact was enormous. Streets and schools would empty during outbreaks, as families kept children at home in terror. At its peak, polio paralyzed or killed hundreds of thousands annually. But beyond the suffering, polio became a symbol of humanity's ability to rally against an invisible enemy. In the 1950s, American virologist Jonas Salk developed the first effective polio vaccine. Unlike earlier experimental attempts, Salk's vaccine was tested in one of the largest medical trials in history, involving over a million children. When the results were announced, celebrations broke out across the globe. People wept in relief, church bells rang, and Salk was hailed as a hero. Later, Albert Sabin's oral vaccine made immunization even easier and more widespread. The eradication campaign that followed became a blueprint for global health initiatives. Polio cases dropped by more than 99% worldwide, with entire continents declared polio-free. The campaign also highlighted the importance of trust in science and the challenges of delivering vaccines to conflict zones, remote villages, and areas plagued by misinformation. Though eradication has not yet been fully achieved, wild polio remains endemic in just a couple of countries. The near conquest of this disease demonstrates the extraordinary power of vaccines. Polio, once a global nightmare, is now on the brink of becoming the second human disease eradicated after smallpox. Ebola. Ebola is a deadly viral hemorrhagic fever first identified in 1976, infamous for its high mortality rate and terrifying symptoms. Few viruses capture the imagination of fear like Ebola. 
with a fatality rate that can reach 90% in some outbreaks, Ebola doesn't just kill, it does so in horrifying fashion. Patients develop fever, muscle pain and weakness, which quickly escalate into vomiting, diarrhea and uncontrolled bleeding. In the most severe cases, internal organs fail as the body effectively unravels from within. Ebola first appeared in small African villages near the Ebola River in what is now the Democratic Republic of Congo. For years, outbreaks were rare, contained by geography and limited human movement. But when the virus resurfaced in 2014, it spiraled into the largest Ebola outbreak in history, devastating West Africa. Cities like Monrovia and Freetown, with dense populations and fragile healthcare systems, became epicenters. The world watched in horror as hospitals overflowed, medical staff died in alarming numbers, and governments struggled to respond. International aid groups scrambled to build treatment centers, while fear spread faster than the virus itself. Airline screenings, quarantine zones, and media coverage turned Ebola into a global conversation. Though only a handful of cases reached Europe and the US, the psychological impact was immense, proof of how quickly a localized outbreak could send shockwaves around the globe. Yet the Ebola crisis also highlighted human resilience and innovation. Brave local health workers and international volunteers risked their lives, often with minimal protection, to treat patients and bury the dead safely. The urgency of the crisis accelerated vaccine development, leading to the creation of effective Ebola vaccines within just a few years, an unprecedented achievement in modern medicine. Measles Measles is a highly contagious viral disease that has killed millions throughout history, especially children, and continues to resurge when vaccination rates fall. If smallpox was the executioner of kings, measles was the silent thief of children. For centuries, measles carved a devastating path through communities worldwide. Its symptoms, fever, cough, runny nose, and a rash, might sound simple, but the virus's real danger was hidden in its complications. Pneumonia, encephalitis, and immune system suppression often followed, leaving survivors vulnerable to other deadly infections. In fact, Measles is so contagious that if one infected person enters a room, up to 90% of unvaccinated individuals nearby will catch it. Before the vaccine era, measles outbreaks were a grim certainty, striking every few years. The numbers were staggering. In the 20th century alone, before widespread vaccination, measles killed an estimated 2.6 million people annually. Unlike diseases that mainly ravaged specific regions, measles was global, sparing no corner of humanity. But the true legacy of measles is its paradoxical role in public health progress. In the 1960s, scientists developed an effective vaccine, and global campaigns dramatically reduced cases and deaths. Entire generations grew up without ever seeing the disease. For a moment, it seemed humanity might follow the smallpox blueprint and eradicate measles entirely. Yet, measles has staged a comeback in recent decades, fueled not by medical failure but by social mistrust. Anti-vaccine movements and misinformation have allowed the virus to resurface in countries where it had once been nearly eliminated. Every outbreak is a stark reminder of how fragile medical triumphs can be when collective action falters. Measles is more than just a disease, it is a mirror reflecting our successes and failures in global health. It proves that science can give us the tools to defeat a virus, but society must choose to use them. SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome SARS is a coronavirus that emerged in 2002, spreading rapidly from China to multiple countries, and was a precursor to the COVID-19 pandemic. When SARS appeared in Guangdong, China, it seemed at first like a mysterious flu. Patients developed fever, dry cough, and breathing difficulties. But what made SARS terrifying was how quickly it spread through hospitals and across borders. Within weeks, the virus had traveled to Hong Kong, Vietnam, Singapore, and Canada. At its core, SARS was a warning shot to the modern world. Air travel, globalization, and urban density turned a local outbreak into a global scare almost overnight. By the time the epidemic was contained, over 8,000 people had been infected, and nearly 800 had died. While the numbers were relatively small compared to later pandemics, the economic and psychological effects were massive. Tourism collapsed in affected regions, hospitals implemented draconian quarantines, and the sight of masked faces became an enduring image. What made SARS particularly influential was not just the damage it caused, but the systems it forced into existence. Governments and global health agencies realized how unprepared they were for emerging viruses. The World Health Organization strengthened its global alert system, and many countries developed rapid response teams to track outbreaks. Scientists also began studying coronaviruses more seriously, 
identifying their potential to jump from animals to humans, a phenomenon called zoonotic spillover. SARS eventually disappeared, thanks to aggressive containment measures, including isolation, quarantine, and strict infection control in hospitals. But it didn't vanish without leaving scars. It showed the fragility of our interconnected world, and how quickly fear could ripple across borders. More importantly, it set the stage for a future pandemic, one that would dwarf SARS in scale and severity. That pandemic, of course, was COVID-19. COVID-19. COVID-19 is a coronavirus disease first identified in 2019, sparking a global pandemic that disrupted every aspect of modern life and killed millions worldwide. In late 2019, reports emerged from Wuhan, China, of a pneumonia-like illness spreading rapidly. Few could have predicted how profoundly this virus, later named SARS-CoV-2, would reshape the world. Within months, COVID-19 engulfed the globe, leading to lockdowns, overwhelmed hospitals, economic collapse, and unprecedented social upheaval. What made COVID-19 so disruptive was its balance of traits. It wasn't the deadliest virus humanity had ever faced, but its combination of high transmissibility, asymptomatic spread, and global connectivity turned it into the perfect storm. Suddenly, the daily rituals of life, going to school, commuting to work, hugging loved ones, became dangerous. Cities fell silent under quarantine. Entire economies froze. Millions lost their jobs, while millions more lost their lives. The pandemic also exposed cracks in modern society. Inequalities in healthcare became glaringly obvious as poorer communities suffered disproportionately. Political divides deepened over lockdowns, masks, and vaccines. Social media amplified both life-saving information and harmful misinformation. Trust in science was tested like never before. And yet, COVID-19 also marked one of the greatest scientific mobilizations in history. Within a year, multiple vaccines were developed, tested, and distributed, an achievement that once would have taken a decade. mRNA technology, previously experimental, became a household term. The pandemic accelerated telemedicine, reshaped workplaces, and shifted how we think about public health. COVID-19 is still a living story. Its variants continue to evolve, its long-term effects are still being studied, and its social consequences will ripple for decades. But one thing is clear, it was not just a pandemic, it was a historical pivot point, a reminder that in an age of globalization, a single virus can halt the world in its tracks. Influenza. Influenza is a recurring viral disease that mutates constantly, causing seasonal epidemics and occasional deadly pandemics that have shaped human history for centuries. Unlike smallpox or polio, influenza never truly disappears. It lingers, shifting and changing year after year. For most people today, the flu is seen as an inconvenience, aches, fever, days in bed. But influenza's history reveals a far more sinister legacy. It is a virus that has repeatedly returned to remind humanity of its power. The Spanish flu of 1918 was its deadliest incarnation but influenza pandemics didn't stop there. Later waves, such as the Asian flu in 1957 and the Hong Kong flu in 1968, each killed millions worldwide. Even the 2009 H1N1 swine flu pandemic, though milder in severity, infected an estimated 1.4 billion people. Every time influenza re-emerges in a new form, it challenges scientists and health systems all over again. What makes influenza so dangerous is its ability to mutate. The virus's genetic makeup is unstable, prone to constant changes that render immunity temporary. Vaccines must be reformulated every year to keep up, and sometimes they miss the mark. This mutability means that influenza carries the potential to unleash another catastrophic pandemic, one that could rival or even surpass the horrors of 1918. Beyond the deaths it has caused, influenza has shaped human behavior and policy. Annual flu shots, school closures, Workplace sick policies and global surveillance networks all exist largely because of influenza's constant threat. It keeps public health systems vigilant and reminds us that the next mutation could arrive without warning. Influenza's story is one without an ending. It is a perpetual shadow in human history, a virus that refuses to be forgotten, and a reminder that our relationship with disease is never fully resolved. Unlike smallpox, influenza may never be eradicated. Instead, it lives alongside us, season after season, shaping how we prepare for, and fear, the next viral storm.